Mary, here we go with answers to your quick bread article questions. You'll notice that I've highlighted them, so I'm going to verbally talk through them, but if you're missing something, I need you to make sure that you get this typed in to your article question assignment that's on Canvas. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to get these first couple sitting up here so you've got some time to start filling them in if need be. So first question, what are the two most common types of leavening agents used for quick breads. They would be baking powder and baking soda. They are considered chemical leaveners. The reason we use them in quick breads is because once they are in contact with liquids, they react immediately, which is why we use them because quick breads you have to bake right away. So baking powder and baking soda. All right, second question. Mixtures leavened with baking soda must be baked immediately while those leavened with baking powder do not. Why? Okay, now don't be confused. Baking powder still needs to be baked immediately, but you got a minute or two extra to get it in the oven. But here's the reason why. Um, baking powder has two reactions because a lot of what you see sold in stores is called double acting baking powder. So it has two reactions then because it's double acting. So the first reaction happens when it is mixed in with the other ingredients and the liquid comes in contact with it. So that's your first one. And then the second reaction happens when they're put into the oven. That's when it'll kick in a second time. So you've got two opportunities to get rising power. Baking soda, on the other hand, once it comes in contact with that liquid, it's one and done. You got to get it in the oven right away. All right, third question here. What three things can you do to make perfect quick breads every time? Well, according to the article, it's pretty basic stuff. Follow your recipe, measure carefully, Mix and handle dough and batter as lightly and quickly as possible. Because again, they're using chemical leaveners, so you got to get them in the oven right away. And then baking at the temperature given. So it's kind of obvious stuff, right? Like basic baking kind of things. All right, question number four. What is the result if you over mix pancake batter? Well, they're going to be tough and they won't rise to their full potential. We don't make pancakes in Culinary One, but in eighth grade FCS, they have in the past. And even if you haven't in an FCS class, pancakes are just one of those things that a lot of people end up making at some point in time. So please, please, please make sure you don't overmix that batter. Otherwise, you honestly could end up with something that's like a rubber Frisbee. I kid you not. I've seen it happen before. And we actually did take a pancake outside one time and we threw it and it worked just as good as a Frisbee and it did not break. That's a problem. Your pancakes should never be like that. Okay, too much gluten. Oof, oof, oof. All right, question number five. Kneading lightly means about six to eight strokes and over kneading will result in a tough biscuit because again, you're creating too much gluten. All right, I'm gonna bring it up here. Okay, question six. Describe the method best used to check for doneness for the following quick breads. Okay, biscuits, they should be doubled in size, golden brown tops, straight creamy white sides, and steam should escape the inside when cut into it. Muffins, you can use a toothpick. We might see some golden brown color depending on the muffin recipe that we're making. And they should have rounded tops. Lobes, you can use a toothpick. You should notice a crack going down the middle of it. And the bread is pulling away from the edges or the sides of the pan. And you might notice some color again here too, like golden brown, again, just depending on the recipe that you're making. All right, I'm gonna go to about here. Now, if I end up going too fast, you are more than welcome to pause the video and just like get it to the part that you need to see, okay? So don't panic if I'm going fast. All right, question number seven. When preparing pancakes, describe the appearance when they're ready to turn or like flip over the first time. Well, your bubbles should be starting to burst and your edges should be looking dry and set. If you notice that, your pancake's ready to flip. Here's the thing though, I don't want you to be a peeker, okay? When it's that first time of flipping, don't peek underneath. 
because some of you, when you break that bond between the pancake and the pan, you might not be able to get as good of a golden color as what you could have had you not peeked underneath. Okay. Now, when you flipped the pancake and now you're wondering if the back side of it or that second side is ready, now you can peek because that's going to be the side touching the plate anyways and nobody's going to see that. So it doesn't matter at that point then um, whether you've broken that bond or not. Okay. So just caution, don't peek when you're doing the first flip. All right, I'm going to come up here now. Okay, question number eight. How can you tell when waffles are done if you do not have a signal on your waffle iron? Steam stops coming out from the sides of the waffle iron. Because when you first put that batter in, it's going to be like steam, 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 coming out left and right. Oh, my goodness. But as soon as that starts slowing down and stops, your waffle's done. Okay. Um, let's see. And some of you, it might even be once it's slowed down, your waffle might even be done at that point because the more batches of waffles you do, the quicker they are going to actually finish cooking in the waffle irons. So, um, watch for that slow down steam. Now it should only be coming out like a trickle. And if it stopped completely, oh my gosh, yes, they're definitely done. All right. Question number nine. When making donuts, what should you do when they rise to the surface? And we're talking about rising to the surface of your deep fat frying oil, okay? Um, when they rise to the surface, that's when you're ready to flip them and turn them over, okay? It's really important, though, that you don't pierce them or poke them because if you do that, the oil is going to be allowed to soak into the inside of your donut, and that's what's going to make them really soggy, bogged down with oil and that's just that's overkill even for people that do like deep fried donuts like ugh, it's just too much um let's see number 10 describe the best pans for baking um for biscuits and muffins you want a shiny metal and biscuits it's usually going to be a cookie sheet or a baking sheet of some kind and then muffins obviously a muffin tin right um, and then any kind of like lighter color metal would be ideal again because we know that's what most recipes are assuming you're using unless it calls for something different. And then for loaves, a duller metal pan um, or a glass loaf pan, those tend to work pretty well. Okay. Uh, let's see, number 11, how can you ensure your muffins will not become soggy? Well, once they're cooled down, get them out of the muffin pan or tin to cool the rest of the way and put them on a cooling rack. That way air can get to the bottoms. Or if you had to leave them in the pan, tilt the pan slightly so there's a little bit of a gap where air can get to the bottoms. That's going to prevent any kind of sogginess from occurring. All right, then we have question number 12. Why is it best to allow loaves to cook completely, wrap them, and wait several hours before serving? Well, first and foremost, if you cut it right away when it comes out, you're not going to get nice even slices. The bread is too fragile straight out of the oven, and it's going to crumble when it's cut into. So your slices fall apart, and that's a bummer. The other reason when you're doing loaves is it's really important for it to have the cool down time because it's allowing the flavors to finish blending. And some of you know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna pick on some banana bread for a second here. If you eat banana bread straight out of the oven, it's not as flavorful as if you had let it cool down for a couple hours or maybe try eating a slice the next day. That's when you actually get your best flavors because they had a chance to finish doing their blending. Okay, so something to think about. Let your loaves cool down if you make them in the future. All right, number 13, how full should muffin cups be filled? Two thirds full, unless the recipe states otherwise. And then loaf pans should also be filled two thirds full. All right, question 14, what should you do if some of the muffin cups remain empty? We want to fill them halfway with water or half full with water because remember we don't want the pan just sitting there baking itself it's not good for the pan and then the other thing is that part of the pan is going to retain all that extra heat and that's going to cause your muffins next door to start to overbake and get dried out and potentially burn and that's not cool 
All right, question 15. What steps need to be followed to freeze loaves of quick breads? We want to cool them completely, wrap them in foil, heavy duty plastic wrap, or freeze a wrap. And you can freeze them up to three months without any real product quality loss. Okay, so really make sure that they're sealed up well, whatever materials you end up using, and get the air pushed out as best you can too, okay? Because I know some of you might use Ziploc bags, get the air pushed out. Trust me, you're, you're going to have better product quality when you take them back out. All right, then describe perfect biscuits. They should be doubled in size, level golden tops, straight creamy white sides, tender, flaky, light, not dense, slightly moist, um, meaning they shouldn't be dried out. And then drop biscuits, on the other hand, those should be golden brown with irregular contours. So we want to have the pebbly exterior. Muffins, golden, if it applies to the recipe being made, slightly rounded tops, and then even textured crumb on the inside. And also pebbly exteriors would work there too. Loaves should be golden brown, again, depending on the recipe. You should have a crack going down the center, and then the, it should be slightly pulling away from the sides of the pan. And then um, pancakes should be golden brown in color and then very feathery light on the inside, not rubber frisbees. Oh, my gracious. Okay, so those are your answers to the quick bread questions. If you are needing anything else, feel free to send me an email. You can have the sub write down whatever questions you have, um, and then I will address those when I return. Otherwise, if there's any time remaining at this point, you can go into Canvas and underneath the resources tab, I have attached the study guide. So if you wanna start studying for your test, cause I'm thinking we're gonna be ready, oh gosh, like Wednesday, Thursday next week for sure like, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday for sure. So it's going to be one of those two days. So if you want to start planning ahead for what's going to be coming up on it, that would be a great idea. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you when I return.